Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today, um, this Saturday rainy afternoon. Um, this is really meant to be a conversation. We have panelists here who are experts in various aspects of child development and play and also in museum education. But it's an intimate setting. It's really meant to be a space for people to talk. We're parents, we're teachers. Actually, can I see a show of hand of teachers in the room? Teachers? Parents? Both? <laughs> Excellent. Um, I have a 10-year-old daughter and a six-and-a-half-year-old daughter. And when, they, when my younger daughter was three, I was doing a dissertation, uh, my dissertation research on time use for three-year-olds. So I was the mom of a three-year-old, and I was interviewing 321 moms, talking to them about how their three-year-olds spent their time. And specifically, I was looking at adult-directed activity and child-directed activity. And it was really metacognitive and fascinating because I was living this life and then thinking about the whole landscape of childhood today in the US and what that looks like. Um, so that's sort of the, the impetus for this kind of conversation is having a space to talk through that and think about um, what we can do ultimately positively in our everyday lives to make sure that we do allow time for the self-directed uh, play. Um, I'm going to briefly introduce the panelists Carol Charno is our, is our CEO. She has uh, been here since 2010, bringing 25 years of cultural nonprofit management uh, experience to the museum. And under her leadership, uh, the museum won the 2013 IMLS National Medal, the nation's highest honor conferred on museums and libraries for extraordinary service to the community. She is a member of the Mayor's Cultural Planning Steering Committee, and she was recently named a Bar Fellow in the class of 2015, and she went to Bolivia as part of that work. <laughs> She's also received the Emerson College Distinguished Alumni Award in 2015, and prior to her uh, role here at Boston Children's Museum, she was the founder and general director of the Opera Boston, where she produced 50 operas and musical theater original productions at the Cutler Majestic Theater, receiving Boston Globe's Best of Boston eight years. So thank you so much, Carol, for joining us today. Um, to Carol's right is Dr. Michael Yogman. Dr. Yogman has been in pediatric practice in Cambridge for uh, over 20 years, after several years working full-time at Boston Children's Hospital with Dr. T. Barry Brazelton, one of the sort of original pediatricians of the world, I think. Um, he, uh, Michael is also assistant clinical professor of pediatrics at Harvard Medical School, where he teaches and does research on the father-child relationship developmental interventions, and nutrition and behavior. He's been a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics since 1973. Uh, incidentally, Dr. Yagman is also writing, is the lead author on the new American Academy of Pediatrics report on play. There were two released so far, one in uh, 2007 and one in 2011, advocating uh, for play as essential to a uh, healthy child-adult connection. Thank you for being here, Dr. Yagman. And then uh, to Michael's um, right is Janice O'Donnell, uh, who began her career as an alternative free school teacher and administrator. She was then the executive director at Providence Children's Museum from 1987 through 2014, after first joining the museum staff in 1979 to manage special projects and communications. She now directs Providence Play Corps, which we will hear about uh, later on, for the City of Providence Parks and Rec Department. And she's a founding member and spokesperson for Recess for Rhode Island, and she consults for several child-centered organizations. Um, she's playfully known as the priestess of play, which I love. <laughs> and her driving passion is awe of children's creativity, resourcefulness, and curiosity. Thank you so much, Janice, for joining us. Finally, uh, this would truly not be happening today if it weren't for Erin Davis, because she is the filmmaker for The Land, the film we are going to watch together. Erin um, is a Vermont-based filmmaker and podcast producer. Her debut film, The Land, premiered at the Full Frame Documentary Film Festival and has since screened across the country in festivals, classrooms, and living rooms, including mine, uh, and has been featured by The Atlantic and NPR Ed, and her favorite game is Catch. Thank you so much to all of you for um, joining us today. So we're going to um, transition into watching the film. So if I could ask the panelists to please come over to the seats that are labeled reserved. And when they are doing that transition, I would like all of you to 
think back to one of your earliest childhood memories, this is likely some time between the age of three and 11 or 12, and be in a moment that brought you joy. Think specifically about a moment that brought you joy. These children are in an extraordinary new playground in London. It is the creation of one remarkable woman, Marjorie Allen. Lady Allen of Hertwood. She has built an international reputation as a propagandist for children's play. <laughs> I'm really a landscape architect by profession, and I've always been interested in the places where people live, their environment, but especially the children, and I think they get a pretty raw deal. What do we give them? We give them an asphalt square playground with a few pieces of mechanical equipment. And there they're expected to spend all their adolescent lives swinging backwards and forwards on a swing. It's just not good enough. And it's a problem that had to be solved somehow. I've always liked the statement of Lady Allen, and that's better a broken bone than a broken spirit. And I think that, that that's true, you know. Children have to learn how to manage their own risks. My little girl does. And, you know, it's hard. It's hard as a parent to allow your child to do that. Um, but you've just got to. Children these days go looking for the risks that they need. They can create their own houses, their own climbing frames. They can play with very dangerous tools. They can they take can risks, risks and overcome, and overcome them. them in a very free and permissive atmosphere. <laughs> I'm not 11, Jimmy. I'm not 11 for all this. <laughs> I know, just get, just get, just get oh, some no, wood and then put it in fire. Yeah.
yes, 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 no. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Whoa. I did it! Whoa. We've got one little girl and she likes to sit and be on her own. You don't have to go up to her and say, you're all right because you're quiet and you're on your own. No, it's fine. If you want to be quiet here, that's fine. If you want to be noisy and loud, that's fine. <laughs> we watch the children that we work with and see what interests them and then you provide Ready for the rope? Not yet, hang on. That's pretty good. That'll do, I think. Can you tell me what you're doing real quick? Putting a swing up with one of these, it's a bit different. Putting it high as well, higher than a normal swing, so it's harder to get into. Plus the rope stretches, so it gives it some slack, so it should last longer. Now, how are the kids going to get in this? I don't know. I'm not sure how they're going to get in, but they'll, they'll find a way. We've got to make sure we don't build what we want to build. We've got to make sure we build with the child in mind. Is it stretching? No, nope, it's good. <laughs> it's going all over my face. <laughs> but I'm having a great time, so that's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get you out, babe. Look at your face. It's all over my face. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wipe that. Yeah, most of it's on my face now, so it's all right. That's, yeah, it's good. It doesn't slack too much either, is it? No, oh, that's not my stuff as well. Yeah. Who done that? I don't know. Was it here when you came? Yeah. You done it last night? Nah, I wouldn't do that. I genuinely think most of the time they'd have no idea. They actually say which kids built this. And we say, don't know. Huh. And it just keeps that little bit of magic of discovery. Because if no, if Dave doesn't know, then maybe no one knows. And uh, maybe this could be mine, you know? And tell me when you want to get out. I'll stop it for you. Yeah? <laughs> Sit down. Oh, don't spin it though. <laughs> Risks and hazards are different things. That's a kid taking a risk. Something they're choosing to interact with, you know? Ah, that's worse. If a half-burnt block falls off the fire and they step on a nail that's sticking out of it, that's not them taking a risk. That's a hazard to that child. That child's not aware of it. But it's the stuff they can't see that's our job. Our job is to remove things that can cause them harm. Dave, will you look after my phone? Yeah, yeah. Don't get it back. Do you want to put it in the office? Go on. Right. Dave, will you help me then, please? Do you want to put it in the office, Eve? No. Right. I'm going to climb up that tree. Thin, that branch. And because you know me. Eve, 
a thicker one than that snapped on me the other day. Sorry, yeah, but you're dead true, that is very true. Like, but, you know, just, just thought I'd share it with you. Heavy on it, wouldn't it? You see this splitting. But you're heavier than old. There you go. It's not good that I keep sliding. Even when you feel uncomfortable with what's going on, that's not what should inform your next move. Done it without you, Dave. to an adult eye, it may look chaotic and ugly. To the child, it's just possibilities. Whoa. 